please take a seat. Student Amos. Yes, ma'am. This is a release hearing. Do you know everyone on the panel? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We'll go ahead and proceed then. My name's Hunter Amos. I'm 16 years old. I turned probably about 14. I found my mom's pills. I asked her what they were, and she said they were pain pills. So I mean, I tried them, and then I just from there I just started doing pills. I started doing more pills than I thought I could ever see myself doing. Percocet, Xanax, Klonopin, Lyrica, Promethazine, Dilaudid, Oxycontin. I was popping them, snorting them, smoking them. I started slowing down in school. My grades started dropping. I started skipping school. I could go with new pills. Sixth grade, I think I got suspended maybe three or four times. In eighth grade, it was probably like six or seven. In the ninth grade, I got expelled. After pills weren't really getting it, I started doing heroin. Love you. Love you. We didn't have any idea Hunter was doing drugs like he was. There's not much he hasn't tried. I mean, they have parties where they, they all take any drugs they found at home, and they throw it all in a big bowl, and everybody takes a handful. Sometimes it can be impossible to stay clean. I think it's a constant battle and struggle, two steps forward, three steps back a lot of times. We're just lucky he didn't overdose. We're lucky he's not long dead. We have cried and cried and cried over this child. The kid has loads of potential, loads of potential. He's a very bright kid. He also has that potential where he can make a mistake and start hanging around with the wrong kind of kids. Maybe get into the drugs again where he can be doing, you know, five to ten years in an adult facility. I think I've changed a lot. When I came in here, I just, I don't know what it was. I just started reading the Bible more. I read it every night, pray every night and morning. I go to church, happy to go to church. <laughs> He has started to do good again, uh, working with the counseling staff. I believe he will uh, continue to go down the right path. I just started thinking I need, I need to change my friends or I'm going to come back. There's kids here for stabbing people, rape, and all that. Hopefully what lies ahead in my future is staying clean, getting a job, and being successful. Count your cards. You guys got a wine like two years. I don't want to go back to doing drugs. I don't want to come back here. The history is he's always high. He's always stoned. But he's not had that opportunity, obviously, being incarcerated. The key is to stay off the drugs. If not, it's back down that cycle that got him here in the first place. Is he really ready to go home? All it takes is one more. I could be here for a two-year DT, or I could be dead. I'm pretty nervous about my release hearing. This is the first time I've been here, so I don't know how it works. They told me I had to have a concrete plan of like what I'm gonna do when I get out, how I'm gonna stay clean. I don't know, I'm pretty nervous. Please take a seat. Student Amos. Yes, ma'am. This is a release hearing. I wanna ask you a question before we get started. Are you nervous today? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. I think that's good. This is an important step for you in this program. It's an important step for this committee. All right. We'll go ahead and get started, Mr. Courtney. All right. Mr. Amos, begin by telling us why you are in the Department of Correction. I had a bad problem with drugs. And what kind of drugs? Mostly opiates, pain pills, and heroin. How often were you using? Every day. How did you get all this? I first found out what they were from my mom. She was prescribing for a knee. The heroin she was prescribed? Oh, not the heroin, the pills, the pain pills. <laughs> How did you get the heroin? Uh, one of my friends introduced me to it. How are you affording to pay for all this? By selling my mom's pills. Since you also have a battery, tell me about that. Uh, the kid uh, bought some weed off one of my friends, and he got caught, and he snitched on him, and he was about to go to jail. And I owed that kid some money, so I just beat, beat the kid up for him. Did you perceive what you were doing as an okay thing to do? Mm, at the time, because my friends were like, if you do it, I mean, we'll just go smoke some weed afterwards. We don't even worry about it. Was that child injured? He had a cracked cheekbone. So he was seriously injured. Looking back, is it just kind of a dumb kid doing dumb things, or tell yeah. us more about it? I didn't, now that I look back on it, I think I find it kind of it was uh, kind of pointless to do. What about the, the victims? What about them? I 
see your last conduct report was inciting a riot. Were you playing around that time too? What about the the victims? What about them? Uh, I feel bad for him. I mean, I didn't know how out of control I was getting. How's it in school, Mr. Stillwell? Doing pretty well, aren't you? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about school. Uh, I think I have all A's and one C. How old are you now? I'm 16. So you're not too far behind your same age peers. You've done very well. Your grades are fantastic. But you need to remember once you leave the success that you have been able to demonstrate here. Because you can do it. Your assessment scores are very strong. And that's an indicator that you can be successful. And you will be as long as you stay off the drugs. Cap House's conduct bill. Uh, looks like you had one major conduct report. That was for theft. What, what did you take and where did you take it from? Hygiene. Did you admit to it? Did you plead guilty? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, good. How long have you been at this facility? Since March 27th, so just under four months. So for about four months you've been clean. That's not a very long time to be off heroin, is it? So that's the number one is you're going to have to go to counseling. It says your parents are looking forward to you coming home. So how many times have they seen you since you've been here? Every Sunday. Every single Sunday. So you have a support system, right? Yes, ma'am. With your parents, they, they managed to come up here every weekend for the last four months. Yes, sir. Do you understand like, the sacrifice they've made for you? Are there any other questions from the panel? OK. Do you have any questions for us? Oh, Anything else you want to share with us about your program, what you've accomplished here, what you've learned? Basically, the main thing I've learned is ways I can stay out of trouble and be a positive, successful person. Step out there for management, okay? Just, I'll come back and get you. I think I deserve my release. I've done my program the best of my ability, stayed out of trouble. I'm ready to change my life. I'm ready to go home, see my family, hang out with my friends, change them, keep them away from drugs. Hopefully, God, you can help me. Help me with this. I can get my release. All right, let's, let's, yeah. let's right. Focus, focus on the issue at hand here. He has shown some insight into his behaviors. I mean, he really has. He was able to dialogue with me. Uh, the fact that when he does make a mistake, he admits it. And he's At least he recognizes his problems, too. You know, uh, he's he a decent kid. Just a kid that got caught up in those drugs and everything he's done. As a result of that, has led him through all these different loops. The only concern I would have is he's had a lot of academic and behavior supports here. So afraid that he could get lost in the system, if you will, so. When he gets out of here, he needs to have a real plan. When I got locked up, it made me feel pretty sad. And I have to get my release, or then you either get it or you don't get it. OK, Hunter. Do you have any questions before we tell you the results? Oh, man. OK? Congratulations, you have your promotion to release. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. Congratulations. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Have a good day. I'm just happy. I'm ready to go home. Just appreciate all the help I got, all the support I got here. I thank all my friends and family. Get started. Right. Mr. Arnold, uh, begin by telling us why you are in the Department of Corrections. Yeah, I've seen here for uh, burglary and escape. Uh, what did you burgle? A uh, house. Cut off. Whose house was it? I don't know. 
Just a, a random house? What did you take? TV, a couple game systems, and some liquor. How'd you get caught? I was uh, running down the street with the TV. <laughs> How big of a TV was it? 46 inch. Wow. How big was it? 46 inch. Oh my goodness. You were easy to spot then. Escape with you, were you on house arrest? Yeah. You I just cut off your band? Yeah. What, why, why did you cut it off? Because I got, uh, I was, got caught having sex in the school bathroom and I got expelled. And that was a violation. So, I went so then you cut it off and took off? Why were you having sex in the school bathroom? Because <laughs> I was on house arrest and uh, I, I, my mama wouldn't let the girl come to my house. So it was consensual, it was your girlfriend or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Very romantic. <laughs> <coughs> All right, talk about some of the things uh, that you've learned here. Uh, that's going to make you a better person when you leave here. Well, I learned how to control my anger and bite my tongue and stuff in that nature. What does that mean, bite my tongue? Like, stop, like, for instance, like, the staff, like, if I feel like they're trying to be funny, instead of me cussing them out, I just hold it and hold my tongue, like, not say nothing, just walk away. So you've learned to be quiet and walk away from issues rather than to yeah. fight back or say something negative. Yeah. Very good. Um. What are some of the other group, the programs or groups you've completed? Uh, like why try? Tell me, what was your favorite metaphor? Uh, jumping the hurdles. Why? Because I feel like I jumped a lot of hurdles while I, while I was in here. What are some of the hurdles you've jumped? Uh, like uh, basically like holding my tongue, controlling my anger, and going to school. I used to hate going to school, but. No, I really don't mind going to school. Mr. Stowell, how's he doing in school? Calendra, you have a 4.0 behavior average. You've earned some credits while here. You know how many? I think like three. You've earned three, and you have the potential to earn two more before you leave. How many had you earned before you came here? Zero. Zero? Why? So I wasn't going to school. Like I said, I, I didn't like going to school, period. And I just never had a good entrance. When I was younger, I did, but now I really don't. Let me ask you this. Now that you've realized some success, will you be able to carry that over back to the public school? Yeah. I, I think, like, when I go back to school, I'll probably uh, stay, stay in classes more and do my work as much as I can. When you first came to us, we had a little bit of trouble keeping you in class. Yeah. What changed? I just got tired of sitting here wasting my time. You know, if you stand, if you're in here, you might as well get something out of it. There was a period of time where I had to go looking for you in the hallways because you would just leave class without permission. That's been quite a while ago, and you've done a good job. You've earned credits. You've maintained a solid behavior average. What high school do you plan on going to when you leave? Probably how in high school. That's where you went before you came here, right? Okay. Well, you'll have a move-in case conference when you return. You're going to have to let them know what are things that have helped you while you were here, because you have an individual education plan. And you have some goals that you've reached, so that's great. And there's have been accommodations that have helped you reach those goals. So you'll need to communicate to those folks, and we can help participate in that conference. What has been helpful while you've been here? You just need to let them know that, okay? Yeah. Right. Uh, a while back, you received a conduct report for assault on a student. <coughs> uh, you pleaded not guilty, although you were found guilty. Your plea was not guilty to the hearing board. Do you uh, still maintain that you were not guilty, that you did not assault? that student. Yeah, I was guilty. Okay. Thank you. I was looking at some of your aftercare uh, plan, Calendry, and 
What I notice is that it says that you may have ha had a substance abuse problem. Did you have a substance abuse problem prior to coming here? Yeah, I, I had a substance abuse problem. What kind of drugs were you taking? Uh, a bomb of fluid and uh, alcohol and marijuana. Wow. Um, you still want to do in bombing fluid? No, not. Or any of the other? I really don't have a, a great desire for drugs anymore because I didn't been so long without them, so. Do you like being clear-headed versus yeah. being high? Um, it, it's going to be imperative that you go to counseling for, for substance abuse. You know, because it's a lot easier when you're on the streets to get uh, drugs and marijuana and, and alcohol to keep you clean. Do you um, have some positive peers picked out? Any yeah. kind of programs that you're, that you're going to attend? Yeah, when I get out, I'm going uh, to try to get a job and maybe go to the YMCA in my spare time. Is that going to see a mentor or just to work out? Kind of both, because I have a mentor already. Uh huh. Over the at YMCA. Nah, he's a uh, he's a police officer. Oh, you have a mentor already? Okay, great. The Marion County Therapy, you can do participate in the AIM program. Yeah. Okay. I have a, a question. I want to ask Mr. Stillwell. I saw in his packet that in 2010 he was at the Indiana Developmental Training Center. Mm -hmm. Would there be a purpose for him to continue that kind of a program or has that already been resolved and is not, no, not any longer needed? It, it's my understanding that's been resolved okay. when he went to Thomas Howe. Okay, very good. And that would be a decision um, the public school would need to make if okay. for whatever reason you get there. and. You're not as successful as you should be. You remember when you were at the training center, developmental yes. training center? So just a couple of years ago, not quite that long. Uh, the reason I ask that question is because they can be very, very helpful to you. And so if when you were involved in that program before, you felt like it was helpful to you? Yes. When you leave, if you develop those same kinds of needs, that program is still available to you. Okay. Okay. Arnold, what's your long-term goals? What What are your career goals? <clears throat> well, I want to be a gynecologist. A what? A gynecologist. A who? <laughs> a what cosmetologist or a gynecologist? A gynecologist. I get them kind of. You know what a gynecologist is? Yeah. What is? It? Uh, deliver babies. Oh, OBGYN. That'd be a little bit easier. We're going to have to buckle down and get some credits and get to studying. Yeah, A lot of science and math. <laughs> get to studying. Do you have a backup plan in case med school doesn't work out? Uh, I, I want to be a barber if that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, can we get back to the high school, work Bar with your, uh, your aftercare? and see what's really uh, ideal and what's the best options for you. Uh, I know there are some, some trade schools. There's one in Indianapolis, a barber school, isn't there? Yes. Hmm. And who are you going to live with? My mother. Your mom? Okay. Is that your uh, adoptive mother? Yes. Okay. Very good. That's who you were living with before. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any more questions? Anyone on the panel? Do you have any questions for us? Nope. You do not? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have you leave the room so we can have a discussion before we take our vote, okay? All right. All right. We'll see you back in a minute. Okay. You just said a, gyne a gynecologist? <laughs> I thought, I thought he meant cosmetologist, that's why I asked. Oh, because you do mean like when, barber school? It's in his no. packet that that's what he would like to do, become a barber. I need that. So he meant cosmetologist? No, no he, meant he, meant he meant gynecologist. He meant gynecologist. All right, let's, let's, yeah. let's right. focus on the issue at hand here. Um, he has 
basically done what we've asked him to do. He completed the Staying Sharp program. Uh, he attended the peace learning groups. Of course, he did Why Try. Um, he completed all the goals that we've asked of him. He's doing fine. They made school. everybody come out here. And I like the fact that he likes going to school. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it, it is great that he's earning the credits, and five credits is a lot for the time period he's been here. And um, when he said that he decided he would turn around because he wanted to get something out of the time he was here, that shows that he can reflect back on what he's done, and he can also look at the future. And that's a good sign, I think. Eric? I agree. Uh, despite we did have to move him over to uh, B unit to kind of slow him down a little bit uh, and to kind of uh, some personality conflicts in the units. So I think he's done really well over there. Uh, I think you know he's been able to focus on his behavior and his, his last couple of treatment goals. Uh, and been able to work yeah, through them. So I think he's done what we've asked. Uh, I know with the Marion County program, they'll be very uh, involved in his aftercare. So I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of services already in place for him. When he does get out of here. Okay. Desi, do you want to address the issue of him being over in the behavior modification unit? Yeah. <clears throat> you talking about when he comes back in? Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that. Because he was under investigation and nothing was really ever documented, but it, ever, it wasn't ever totally not either, so we've got a few yeah. concerns, but he and I have talked about that. Any other issues of concern? I'll be meeting with the special education coordinator. Um, the only concern I would have is the school that he's going back to is quite large. And he's had a lot of academic and behavior supports here. So I'm going to try to make sure that we can have some input in that move in case conference okay. because it has benefited him a great deal, uh, the supports here. So afraid that he could get lost in the system, if you will. So if we give them an idea of what has worked, here, then I think it would be a much easier transition for right. him. Well, and we find with a lot of the young men who come here, they do well in our program because it is smaller classrooms, more intense Absolutely. interventions with the teachers, the counselors and the custody staff are all involved in that treatment process. And so they're basically surrounded uh, with folks who are focused on their needs, their issues, and uh, success. When they leave, um, all of the individuals who are working with them are not necessarily that closely knit as our team would be here. And so there could be the opportunity for the ball to be dropped. And so sure. that's good for you to do that. Okay. I'll make sure I okay. take care of that. Okay. All right. So take a long time. we're all in agreement? I think okay, so. Okay. We'll go ahead and bring them back in. Just when you guys talk about B unit, we just refer to it as SEG all the time. So if you talk to him about SEG okay. instead of B unit, because then I'd have to have to describe what that okay. is, behavioral modification. Well, we're going to use both words. Okay, yeah. that's great, yeah. as long as you call it SEG. We use both yeah. words, actually, yeah. Linda, when we interview the kids down there. Because we don't want folks thinking he's leaving from SEG. Right. Yeah. right. Thank you for coming back in. We are... Uh, going to take a vote, but before we do that, we want to talk just a little bit about you being uh, in the behavior modification unit, the, the segregation area, not in a negative way, in a positive way, as to uh, how that benefited you being in that unit. And we'll have Ms. Price uh, start off with sharing that since she's the supervisor in that area. Do you remember when we brought you down? Do you, do you understand why you came down? Yeah. Tell me why you came down. For extortion. And what was the other word I told you we were looking into? Uh, I forgot. Bullying? Yeah, bullying. Okay. Basically, we had a lot of reports. Your name came up a lot about <laughs> some bullying and some extortion, that you were threatening kids for stuff. And um, there were kids that were threatening to retaliate against you, and there were kids that were scared of you. So we were trying to sort all that out. So we brought you down there. And in the investigation, they never really found 
either way documented yes or no that was just kind of a lot of talk so what we decided to do was work with you down there to finish your program and make sure that we gave you a lot of support and finished out your program so um, I wanted to make sure you understood that you've done well down there except for the one day that you you climbed the fence and didn't come in off the rec pad and um, that was really your only bad choice you made down there so you've done well down there. Do you have any questions about that process? Because that's my only concern is that we never really got a good understanding of if you were doing those things or not. So if you do, if you were doing those things um, and you go back out and you're a kid that bullies and threatens people to take their things, then you go out to a public high school and you do that, then what kind of problems is that going to cause you? Probably get arrested or something. Right. So I want to make sure you've we've done as best as we can to teach you not to do that. Yeah. So what can you say about that? Uh, when I get out, uh, I don't think, I'm, I'm not going to have a desire to bully and extort people for things. I don't know, I just, I guess I learned that while I was in here, but I didn't think I broke the habit. What made you fall into it in here? Uh, I've seen everybody else doing it. I wanted to have what they had, so I did what they did. So what if you want what the other kids have at how? I'm going to work for it. Okay. Are you going to have people that if you don't understand how to get it, are you going to have people that you can call and talk to and use appropriate means? Like here, you could have come to staff. You could have come to us and said, you know, there are things that I, I don't understand or there are things that I need help with here or things that I see other kids have that I don't have but you didn't choose to come to us, so what's gonna make you choose to go to people for help when you get out? When I go home, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a good support system to support me. So. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Price. Go ahead. Uh, I vote to approve. I agree. I vote to approve. I agree. I vote to approve. Congratulations, Mr. Arnold. You have your promotion to release. Thank you. Thank you. I have some questions for you before you leave. There have been some staff who have helped you since you've been here. Would you like to share with us their names? Uh, Johnson. Which Johnson? Uh, short, light skin. E. Johnson. Ernest oh, Johnson. Yeah. Man, he helped me a lot and kept me okay. out of trouble. And Robinson, down in Okay. How about okay. counselors? Price, Blake, and teachers. Uh, McIntyre and the Hargett, the gym teacher. Okay, before you leave, I'm just going to repeat something that you said here that I thought was noteworthy, and I wrote it down. You said, "I will work for it." Remember, you said that. Because if you keep that thought in your head, you'll do well. Congratulations. Good job, Arnold. Did you want to shake our hand? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Like your hair. Congratulations. Good job.
How long has it been since you've seen your mom? Like a year. It's been a year since I've seen my mom. Excited and nervous all at the same time. You gonna miss this place? No. Okay. I'm never gonna miss this place. I hate it here. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Yes, Andre, you almost look cute. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. So what's going on? Nothing much. I like your outfit. I don't. Uh, your hair has grown. I know. So I got taller too. Or you yeah, got shorter. Yeah, you are tall. No, I ain't got shorter. <laughs> now, how about that? Oh, let me hug you again. It's good to see you. I hope you do right. I am. Okay, then. So you ready to go home? Yep. Are you gonna do things different? We gotta talk about this now. You gonna do things different? Yeah. You gonna, I mean, your way of thinking, how is it now? Positive. Positive. So you do know if you, I mean, if anything go wrong, you know I'm there, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not your friend, I'm your mother, okay? You need to talk, we, we can talk. There's nothing we can't talk about, okay? I just want you to come home, I want you to do What's right? I'm getting emotional. But I want you to do what's right. I want you to come home and end up back in here because this ain't the place you need to be. You need to be with me because I'm your mother. They're not. I want to raise you, not them. And I, I love all my kids and I love you too. This ain't where I want to come and see my child. This ain't where I want to come and greet you and hug you and tell you I love you. I want to be able to wake up and come to you and say I love you. I don't want to have to travel 20 miles to tell you that. And I do want you to do what's right. And if you feel like you're getting ready to do wrong, come and talk to me, okay? Don't, don't just go and do what everybody else wants you to do. You do what you know that I want you to do what's right that's going to keep you out of here, okay? I love you, and I want you home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you, and it was nice to meet you. And how do you feel? I feel good. I'm a free man. I'm a free man.